Thank you to Vertical Events for the opportunity to present. Uh, I've got some big shoes to fill from the big fella, but we'll see how we go. So Bright Star Resources is a West Australian focused gold producer, developer and explorer. Uh, as Chrissy mentioned, it has been a pretty rapid pathway of growth. Um, I like to consider this business is essentially a new company. It has been around a while, but all majority of the assets in the business, the board, management team and strategy are all completely new in the last 18 months. The market cap's gone from circa seven or eight million dollars uh, when I joined and, and a few of the changes started to happen. And I think today we're at a market cap of about 130 or 140. Um, the resource base has grown currently within the Bright Star portfolio as of today to, to two million ounces. And we do have a, a merger with a company called Alto Metals underway by way of a scheme of arrangement. So just to, just to cover off on our asset base, uh, we do have uh, a number of hubs in Western Australia. All of our resources are located on granted mining leases. Uh, and really the opportunity for us is, is to organically grow the production profile um, from what we're currently producing uh, to something a lot more substantial. So within our Laverton and Menzies hubs, as we term them, there's about one and a half million ounces of resources. Uh, we do have the operating underground mine in Laverton called Second Fortune, and that was acquired uh, earlier this year through a merger with a private company called Linden Gold. And for us, that acquisition was, was crucial to our strategy of, of growing a, a West Australian gold producer because it gave us an operating mine in Second Fortune and the near-term development-ready Jasper Hills project, which is certainly kind of the next few mines that we look like we'll be developing in the short term. Uh, recently, we announced a three-way transaction with uh, Gateway Mining and Alto Metals. Uh, both of those are located in the Sandstone District. And, and for me, the appeal with Sandstone was the district has significant scale. Both of those two mergers for us delivers one and a half million ounces of resources, again, all on granted mining leases, previously disturbed, previously mined areas. Um, but really, for me, best characterised by significantly underexplored and undercapitalised. Uh, all of the MA that we have done to date in the last 18 months, and there's been, I think, five or six transactions, has really been predicated by picking up assets and projects that were undervalued and just have not had the spend on them, whether they're albeit private or small publicly listed companies that just didn't have access to capital. Really the opportunity for us has been to consolidate ounces that are gonna come out of the ground. And really that's been the focus for us is every transaction we've done, the lens is, you know, are we gonna get multiple, multiple return on our investment? And can this be mined in the near term? So the ounces that we've acquired are not gonna sit in the ground forever. We are building out a team and an asset base that we're gonna monetize in the short term. Uh, pro forma market cap um, post the merger with Alto, which the vote is next month, is circa $170, $180 million, um, and a, a pro forma enterprise value of about $160. Just zooming in on the, on the Sandstone transaction itself, or series of transactions, the Montague East Gold project, which was owned by Gateway, uh, has completed, so that is now 100% owned, uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Brightstar. Those tenements delivered half a million ounces to our portfolio. And, and really what the opportunity for us is, is to hit this pretty hard from an exploration perspective. Both of those assets in that sandstone hub have really had a sporadic and undercapitalised exploration history. So what we are trying to do, and we've committed to doing at least 50,000 metres of RC and diamond drilling next year, is to move that asset base towards a development decision. Rapidly push it through scoping study and feasibility studies and get something that actually can get monetised you know, that, you know, obviously gold price at the moment is at all time highs. So it's a great time to be building a gold business. And, you know, for us, the opportunity is let's, you know, let's, let's hit it pretty hard. We've got a great technical team in house that we've built out over the last 12 months, significant experience in developing mines and operating mines. And, and the opportunity is to try and move those projects actually towards monetization. Zooming in on the Alto Metals tenure within Sandstone. Uh, look, this is a package of ground that I think has got significant exploration upside. Uh, the majority of the resources, of which there's just a nudge over a million ounces in that portfolio, uh, are all very shallow. Predominantly oxide material, minimal drilling below 150 metres vertical depth. Uh, really, I think that the, there's significant untapped potential that sits within that Sandstone hub. Alto historically been focused on the resource areas which are shown there in the the red being the Lord's Corridor, um, Vanguard and the Indomitable Camps. That's where all the resources sit and we've got you know, a portfolio there where Alto's got 740 square kilometres of prime greenstone belt in Western Australia that has rarely been tested at depth. And for us, that's, what, that's what's really exciting. Um, it's a great part of the world to, to build a mine. There's not a, 
there's not a processing, an operating processing hub within 100, 150 kilometres of sandstone. So the way we think about this is that this is, yeah, if we are successful and we can build a processing centre out there, it will completely unlock that whole belt. And you, you, you kind of cast the net a little bit further afield and there's five or six million ounces that sit that are currently in the ground, in resources, in various companies that don't have a pathway to monetization. So that for us is the real opportunity is to you know, really take these assets that we've acquired, drill them out, grow them substantially, but really eventually creating that processing hub that we can actually monetize these projects. Um, they are all on mining leases. Uh, there's a sealed road that goes through there. Look, it's a great part of the world to try and build something. Uh, I've kind of mentioned a lot of these. Um, from an exploration perspective, 90% of the resource is in the top 150 metres uh, in Alto's ground. Again, that's you're in a part of the world that some of these mines run you know, significantly deep. So there is you know, very strong potential to explore further at depth. Uh, and really, post, post completion of the merger, uh, which is set to complete uh, early December, uh, you know, we've got a, a very aggressive exploration schedule planned out um, to hit that pretty hard with both diamond and RC drilling. Just zooming across or up the belt to the Montague East Gold Project. This is the asset we uh, acquired out of Gateway, uh, which completed two weeks ago. Um, this was a perfect complement for the Alto ground. And really the opportunity was not just buying one company or asset, it was consolidating this package in this region. Uh, this particular ground um, was explored by Gateway Mining, you know, run by you know, two previously two very experienced geologists, well-renowned in Mark Cossum and Pete Langworthy. They did the technical work very, very well. Uh, these assets are well understood. The geology is well understood. And you know, it's, it's half a million ounces, predominantly oxide material, 70 kilometres away from sandstone with a great haul road. This, this stuff comes out of the ground quite, quite substantially. So for us, it was an attractive opportunity. It made sense to try and bolt them together. And you know, the, the combination of them is, is something really that has the standalone endowment to be uh, an operation. So both of these companies in and of themselves didn't have the critical mass to be a producer, to go through feasibility studies to obtain debt and to actually build something. For us, you know, by doing the, the simultaneous transaction, it gave us that critical mass. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, both, almost all the resources are extremely shallow. Um, they're, they're well understood metallurgically. For us, it's, it's just drilling it out further at depth, a bit more diamond drilling, geotech and met work and, and feeding this into scoping studies. We would like to be in a position by the middle of next year to come out with a consolidated scoping study on the Alto and Gateway tenures. Uh, to do so, we need at least 70% of the resources to be in measured and indicated status which really means that we've got a lot of drilling to get into it, and that's what we're quite excited about. This is, as of the, the moment, with Brightstar's got two million ounces in resources. Post the Alto transaction, we'll have one million, a further one million to come into the portfolio. This is the largest kind of gold resource endowment of any junior explorer or developer on the ASX outside of DeGray. So in the Eastern Goldfields, we have the largest resource that's not a currently mid-tier producer. And the way I look at this business is we are an existing producer with cash flow, we've got near-term development, but we've got scale. And we've got something of size where ultimately where the mid-tiers are looking for growth opportunities, Brightstar you know, potentially fits that narrative as an M&A candidate. But uh, outside of that, we've got assets that can actually get developed and monetized ourselves. So we're really excited with what we've got, and it's just about moving these assets forward towards production. We managed to secure the, the assets, um, we'll propose um, acquisition of, of Alto and, and Gateway at a relatively uh, attractive valuation for us. Um, here's some recent peer comps of, of pretty true comparables. These are West Australian pre-production development stage assets acquired in the last few years uh, by a suite of companies. And you can see you know, the comparable average is, is over $100 per ounce. We, uh, the proposed transactions are valued at, at about $35 an ounce for us. Uh, it's probably worth noting that since a lot of these transactions have occurred, the gold price is up 30 to 40 per cent. Um, so, you know, we think that there's a, this is very attractive for our shareholders. It's very accretive and, and made a lot of sense to try and pursue. So why Brightstar? Um, for me, the assets are great. The plan is good. What I really like and what I think you know, I'm probably most proud of to be able to execute is, is the team we've managed to assemble. You know, we've got two proven mine builders and operators in Andrew Rich and Dean Valve, uh, our Exec Director of Operations and COO, respectively. Both of these guys have got deep experience building mines and operating mines in Western Australia. Andy joined us 
as previously the MD of Linden Gold, uh, operating the second fortune mine. Uh, and Dean came across with the original merger with King West. Um, he'd recently joined that company. So for us, we've got two guys with, uh, like, let's call them the late 30s, 40 years old, really well respected um, in their cohort and their peer groups um, and, and are attractors of talent, to be honest. Both of those guys you know, have significant futures in this gold industry in WA. Um, from a geology perspective, we were fortunate to, to pick up a few guys from, from different places. John O'Goff joined us uh, from Romelius, but he was previously the exploration manager at Musgrave Minerals, which was bought out last year with their Q Gold project. John has got great pedigree in Brownfields exploration and taking something through feasibility studies towards production, and you know, he's, he's had a whole career in West Australian gold. Same as Jamie Brown joined us from, uh, from West Gold. His whole career has been West Australian gold and predominantly underground focused in the Murchison. So when we think about having multiple underground mines, being operating in the Murchison, being the sandstone, you know, just having someone of Jamie's calibre from a mining operation perspective has been a huge get for us. Um, the last two I'll, I'll probably touch on here on this slide is, is Nikki Martin, our CFO. Nikki just joined us where she, previously she was the head of finance at Pilgrim Minerals. She went through that from pre-construction at Pilgrim Guru right through to a $15 billion business. So she saw that through financing, construction, operations, the acquisition of Altura, complex offtakes, financings, et cetera, to a business that, you know, when she left had a few billion dollars cash in the bank. So I dare say the gold industry is probably not going to replicate that success, but she's, a, she's been a huge coup for our business. Uh, and lastly, Richard Crooks uh, as chairman, personally someone I've always looked up to as, as a mentor in the industry. Uh, Richard was head of Macquarie and worked um, for Earmark Capital, so he's got finance background, he's a geologist, uh, he's a great steady pair of hands from a corporate governance perspective. He's built and financed a number of mines over his career. And I think, you know, when I approached him a few months ago to join us, uh, you know, he kind of jumped at the opportunity to try and build a you know, West Australian gold producer in a growing business. Just a current snapshot, um, I suppose I'll touch on the, the, the shareholders, it's quite pertinent. When, when I joined this business 18 months ago, there weren't any institutional shareholders. The business is now probably 35% institutionally held. We've got some great shareholders there um, from kind of domestic and offshore. A lot of resource specific or gold specific long only investment funds um, have significantly helped capitalise this business. St Barbara, the uh, sex listed gold miner, are a larger shareholder. They own about 10% of the business. Um, so really the top, uh, what is it, the top 50 own about 73% of this company. So very supportive shareholder base that can, is sitting behind our, our portfolio and wanting to develop this. Uh, the last couple of slides I'll touch on is just some recent exploration results that we have put out. Uh, the next two slides are the Lord Byron and Fish deposits, which sit within our Jasper Hills project in Laverton. These are really the next two mines, cabs off the rank for us. So Jasper Hills is targeted, um, sorry, Lord Byron's targeted to be an open pit. Previously mined, uh, recently uh, went through Sunrise Dam a number of years, four years ago, um, under a toll treatment. This is a perfect West Australian Archean shear hosted gold deposit that's going to be an open pit. And you can look at the widths and the grade there, it's pretty simple. It's a 20 to 30 metre wide shear zone going, you know, one and a half to three grams, um, depending on where you are in the system. So 26 metres at 2.7, 28 at 2.7, 29 at 2.6, very consistent, mineable grades and widths. For us, this is the base load feed for something that's going to make a lot of money. And you know, the drilling that we did at depth, as you can see at the, the bottom of the, the conceptual um, pit shells was, uh, was very successful. So this is going to be a fantastic uh, mine for us and something that we're looking to, to develop hopefully within the next 12 months. The fish deposit up there, uh, quite close to uh, the Lord Byron is, is proposed to be an underground. This will be the next mine that Bright Star develops. We've put this on a fast track development approach. We would think we could be uh, mining this next year. This is a very um, simple underground mine proposed. There's an existing open pit that you can see there. Uh, portal at the bottom, one loop of the decline, then you're into ore. It's a four to five gram ore body. It's three to four metres wide. It is, uh, you know, it's perfect for conventional long, home, long hole um, stoping, which is what we're doing at, at Second Fortune. So what we're looking at doing is basically just taking the, the Second Fortune team, copy and paste, bring the guys across and, and replicate the success over at Fish. I'm gonna get yelled at, there's 10 seconds, Chrissy, but this is, I suppose, a snapshot of our business in the last two years. It's been very busy from an M&A and a corporate perspective. We've completely rebuilt this business with the assets and the team. 
We've drilled nearly 50,000 metres this year of RCN diamond drilling, and we've committed to doing another 50,000 metres next year. We are moving these assets forward as quickly as we can to build a business. We've put out a number of studies which are in the marketplace showing the profitability of this project, and we'll continue to build it. So thank you.